Hey gang, GMapper14 here, and today we're going to be talking about the Google Pixel XL. I have the gray edition, and or as they call it, the quite black edition, because they have to have clever naming schemes for all of their devices. Uh, I looked at the very blue for a few seconds and I was like, you know, it's a little too blue for me, plus I'm going to put a case on it anyway, so I wouldn't be able to appreciate the blueness of the device. These are pretty expensive phones. This was $799, and that's for the 128 gig version, which I do have. I wanted the extra space just for padding, you know, uh, to make sure I don't run out of anything. But uh, let's get into it. I will not be going over all the specs for this, you know. I won't be telling you all the, you know, different things for that. I'm just going to tell you my everyday use as a pre-iPhone user and all that stuff and just give you guys my opinion, and hopefully you guys can see if it's worth it for you to purchase this device. So I switched from an iPhone 7 to the Pixel XL, so I'm going to be coming from that type of perspective. So a lot of people that I've read on the internet and different forums are saying that that's what they're doing too, switching from iPhone to this particular Android phone. And so hopefully this video will be able to tell you guys like why a lot of people are doing that, or at least in my opinion, why I switched. So I really like the build quality of the Pixel XL starting off the bat. A lot of people say it's boring design and they don't particularly find it that interesting but I actually like the two-tone colors. I put a case on my particular device because I did not want to damage the glass back on the device itself, but uh, I like the case anyway, so it's okay that I had to put a case on it. The fingerprint scanner on the back did take some getting used to, but I like the gestures. I'll go over that in a second, but I, I did was easily able to get used to the fingerprint sensor on the back after a few days of getting used to it. The front of the device, people have complained that the chin is a little too big at the bottom. If you get the black one, it's a lot harder to tell that there is a chin there and at the top, but I'm okay with that personally. Your mileage may vary. So as an iPhone user, I'm going to say that a lot, as an iPhone user, I really like this device. It seems to be the perfect phone for an, an Apple user to switch over to. For one, the, the design. When I first saw this phone and it leaked and they talked about it and everything, I was like, this looks like an iPhone. And I thought it was just a copy, a steal, all that stuff. I was like, eh, this is lame. But now that I'm actually holding it in my hands, it has everything that I liked about an iPhone because I already liked the iPhone design. And they put it into an Android phone and made it better. The iPhone was very slippery. This phone is slippery too, but not as slippery because they flattened the sides of the device so it won't slip out of your hands. Whereas an iPhone, they rounded the corners and it was a lot easier to drop. So if you do decide not to put a case on this device, you won't have as much problem as you did with an iPhone or any other of the rounded uh, metal phones. Like I said, plus I just like the design of it personally. The buttons are perfect to click. Uh, the rugged button on the power button, so when you're sliding your hand up the side, you can feel it and just know that that's the power button versus the volume rocker that does not have any grooves on it, so you can tell the difference. Headphone jack on top. I didn't really miss that on the iPhone 7, but I'm happy to have it now, so I don't have to have a dongle. But like I said, that wasn't a big loss for me. And then USB-C on the bottom. So coming from an iPhone, I really do miss the stereo speakers, which were brand new on the iPhone 7. And it took, I only had the iPhone 7 for about a month, and I really got used to the speakers. So the transition has been pretty hard for me with this phone. Even every, every once in a while I'm listening to something, I'm like, is that as loud as the volume goes? Or I accidentally cover up the speakers. So um, I didn't think I was going to mind it that much, but from time to time I do notice if I'm going to watch something on here for an extended period of time, I'm going to want to have headphones or be listening to it with, through my car or something like that instead of just having these speakers playing. But I just have to learn that transition and, you know, I'll be able to get over it. Uh, the camera, of course, of course, is incredible on this device. It has 8 megapixel camera from what I read, and that is all it needs. It looks incredible, it, and I was taking pictures on my iPhone and not having to worry about it at all, but this quality is just amazing. And many people can say that it rivals the quality of the iPhone, if not better, and I have to agree. It takes stunning quality photography. The video also looks incredible. You can be shaking this camera as much as you want while recording a video, and you won't be able to see that in the finished product. It looks as if you had a whole bunch of stabilization equipment around it to hold it there. It's really, really nice, and I enjoy it immensely. The, the, the camera taking experience is amazing, and it's sim you also have a simple shortcut. If you double press the power button, it'll open the camera for you right away, and you can immediately start taking pictures, as you see right there. 
because it is, from what I read, always taking pictures in the background. So when you click the button, it just selects that frame from already taking pictures and gives that to you. So that's why it's so quick. There is no time. That's even with HDR on. You can see how many pictures I'm taking and it doesn't take any time for the HDR to load onto the device itself. The fingerprint reader is pretty quick. I personally think the iPhone was faster and I do miss the iPhone's little, little tricks where you can double tap, not press, but double tap the button to shrink the screen down a little bit so you can access with your hand the uh, longer parts of the screen. There are a lot of moments when there is something higher up and I have to like shuffle my hand around to get to that and I kind of wish there was a little gesture to pull it down. Uh, it's not a deal breaker, but this is the Pixel XL, so you're getting more real estate with your screen, and some things will be higher up and harder for you to reach uh, than on a smaller device. Another thing that I did not like about past Android phones that I used was there was so much lag and delay uh, over time, and I had lots of different problems with my phones. This phone, I have had no problems with that at all. I know it's only been a short amount of time, but Stock Android has zero gimmicks and extra bloatware on there to bog you down. And so they gave you all the power of a high-end phone with the software of like nothing. It's very minimal software. So it doesn't have a lot of things running and keeping the system going down. So it's very, it's just perfect in my opinion. The amount of here's how much the operating system is, here, here's how much power you have. You will never have this taking up as much power as you have because you'll just be flying through the software. Have so many apps open, switching between them, multitasking, everything you're doing, you won't notice any stutters or lags on this. It just flows so effortlessly and I love it. I love Google's little tweaks to the Pixel Launcher. Coming from an iPhone, it makes me feel somewhat at home. The all circular icons that Google is trying to push with the Pixel Launcher, as you can see here, they're trying to make all the apps circular in a similar way that iPhone has all their apps of similar size. I actually like the unification of the system. It makes it a lot more appealing. And like I said, coming from an iPhone, it does resonate with me. If you do want something extra on your phone and you don't want those circular icons, you can definitely download a third-party launcher and get rid of those. But I personally do like them. And I've kept the Pixel Launcher. A lot of people have transitioned over to Nova Launcher, Action Launcher, stuff like that. But I kept the Pixel Launcher because I like the little weather widget in the corner right here, as you can see, and uh, excuse me, over here. And I also like that Google Now is right there. And that's just, like I said, also appeals to me. And once, one thing that also I took getting used to was the App Launcher button at the bottom on the row there, but they got rid of that for the Pixel Launcher, and now you just pull up to get your apps. I rarely go into my app drawer because most of my apps are in folders on the main screen. But if I do go into my app drawer, it took a lot of getting used to. I kept pressing the Google Play Music, which I have where the app launcher would be, but it was so nice for me just to be able to swipe up and I did get used to it. There are a lot of little tricks, like I said, if you hold down the arrow right there, it pulls up the keyboard so you can search for your apps. Just small stuff, but when I do open it, I have gotten used to it so it doesn't bother me anymore like it did before. Speaking of extra little Google tricks in this device, Google Assistant is one of them. At first, I was really excited for this because I tested it out in Allo and could not wait to see the power of it built into the phone itself. But over time, I kind of dislike it. I, I get like worried when I'm about to use it for a few reasons. One, it can't do everything that Google Now, which is right there, can do. It can only do some of it. For example, if I'm driving in the car, I say, okay, Google, what song is playing? It will give you the response. I can't identify songs yet. But if you go over here and say, what song is playing? Right there, listening for music. So it's really sad that right there within Google, you can search for a song, but right here you can't. And I like the touchless feature of it. So when I'm driving, I don't really wanna pick up my phone and swipe over and click song identification. I just wanna say, hey, what song's playing while I'm driving and it can tell me. But of course, can't do that with Google Assistant. There are a few other things that you can't do with Google Assistant that I, makes me hesitant to use it. On my iPhone, I could just say, hey, what are my notifications? It would read them one by one, ask me if I wanna to respond to them. I really liked that touchless control. And Google will get there. It's just right now, it seems a little bit hindered and as if they fully didn't develop it. The other thing I don't like is that the wake word is okay Google, which, stop, <laughs> which I don't mind as a wake word. The only problem is for my Google Home, I also have the wake word, which activates for that. So if I'm laying next to my bed, I wake up in the morning, 
and say, okay, Google, what time is it? My home device activates and my phone. So let's say I'm working on my computer and I say, call my mom. My phone will wake up and my home device, but my home device will answer. My home device will say, I can't do that yet. And I'm like, no, I wanted my phone to do that. So that's a hindrance if you have the Google Home. If you don't have a Google Home, you'll be fine with it. But I can never use the touchless controls with this while I'm at home, at least when I'm in my room, because Google Home gets in the way of that and hinders this device. I wish at least it was smart enough to be like, oh, you want to call somebody? We'll use your phone since that device can't do it yet. But I'm sure they'll integrate it much nicer where that will actually be able to connect to your phone and call through it and make it like a big speaker phone. But for now, it's a little bit of a hindrance in my opinion. The other thing I like about this as an iPhone user is the 3D Touch-esque features where if you hold down the button right there, you do get your quick actions for different apps. I really like that. One of the big reason that I didn't want to switch was I got used to 3D Touch and I really enjoyed that Google implemented that in here. You can definitely tell they're trying to get those iPhone users to say, hey, hey, if you like a few of those gimmicky features, we got them and they work well with here. The only problem I have with it is when I hold it down, I want to keep swiping up and it slide my finger up within one press to get to the quick call, but on the which you can do on the iPhone. But on this phone, you have to hold it down and then let go and then select who you want to call. Not a huge deal, but I was I did keep swiping up and moving the app by accident because I was trying to do what I could do on my iPhone. So just a minor thing there. Not a huge deal. And definitely something you can get used to like I did. So overall... Call quality on this is amazing. I love what they've done with the UI. I love everything about this phone. And every day I just am like, whoa, I really like this phone. And I haven't gotten bored of it yet. They even offered, for me at least, when you first pre-order the Pixel, a free Google Daydream headset, which I have been using. I haven't used it a whole lot, so I'm happy they gave it to me free. I probably would not go out of my way to buy one of these if it was not free, just because I don't see the... Uh, potential there yet. Definitely there are some, some things that will come out for it that will make it really a must buy and it even works over my glasses which is a problem with other headsets but for now I wouldn't go out of my way to be looking at one of these things. It's only $75 so if you have the extra cash and you want to throw it down and be like hey I'm getting this for one day when it'll work really well then go for it. I still like this device I have a full review coming of it but I don't know if it's worth just spending on its own because there's no killer apps in this yet so Overall, I definitely recommend this phone to you. If waterproofing is a big deal to you, this phone does not have that. Don't go there. If wireless charging is a huge deal to you, don't go for this phone. It does not have that. But if you come from an iPhone and you're disappointed with Apple's latest foray into technology, definitely try this phone out. Even if you have a Mac with the new USB-C charging, this works great too. I have a Google Pixel computer Chromebook and I use USB-C to charge it. Now when I go on trips, I only have to bring one charger, and it works for this, and it works for my laptop. It's amazing. I love that, and that's what I wanted from a device where I could seamlessly work with my computer, and this and all my technology work together, and now that the charger is integrated that way, I'm really happy. So it's just coming from an iPhone, there's no fragmentation, and even when I had an Android years ago, I used Google's apps all the time. So now that I moved back, it was very easy, and I like that all the apps work and are built into here. The only thing I wish is that Google Assistant was a little more powerful. Like I said, I can't say what song is playing. I can't say note to self. It's like, oh, I can't do that yet. When you go to Google now, it can do the exact thing. So I wish they would at least merge them together or work harder at that. The design looks fine in my opinion. Overall, I love this device, even the chin, because like I said, I came from an iPhone and my iPhone had a big chin on the bottom there like that. A lot of people complain, but I just think it feels like I'm at home. It makes it work with my my just use case so there's no features down there no home button but I don't mind it and it feels fine in my hand so should you get this phone that's up to you if you love your iPhone but have been swaying lately there's an easy transition to this in my opinion I love it I was an iPhone user for two years had an iPhone 7 iPhone 6s iPhone 5 5s I love iPhones but if I was ever going to switch which I have it would be for this phone it's the only Android phone that I can genuinely say is an iPhone killer. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Hopefully I help you guys out decide what you're gonna do. If you have uh, any more questions about why I've switched from an iPhone, I made a much longer video explaining why I switched from an iPhone to an Android. I'll put a link to that in the description 
also explaining why I tried other Android phones and didn't like those over this one. So, hope you guys had a great day. Check out my channel for a Daydream review coming soon, as well as the Google Home and that versus the Alexa. Those videos are coming out soon, so subscribe so you will not miss those content. Please also watch the advertisement after this video because without advertisers, I couldn't afford amazing technology. So it's a win-win for me and for you because the products offered in the advertisement are pretty cool. See you guys in the next video. Have a great day.